Okay, let's talk about Lando and Drupal 8 and get you going uh, for the things you need to get started developing a Drupal 8 application using Lando to manage your dev dependencies. Over here on the right, we've got some things that um, I'd like to talk about today. And we're going to start with documentation, the Lando docs, some Drupal 8 docs, and there's a couple ways to get started with a Drupal 8 project. My preferred way to do it is using a, a composer managed project so I'll show you that's the way I'll show you we can talk briefly about just in abstract some other ways that are possible to use a Drupal 8 project all right so the main documentation page for Lando is docs.devlando.io and you can read about a lot of things in this documentation Lando is powerful and do a lot of things in this video we're going to give a straight shot to starting up a Drupal 8 application but if you want to do other things there's lots of things you can read about here Drupal 6, 7, and 8, uh, Joomla, Laravel, Backdrop, lots of things you can read about here up to and including complete uh, Docker Compose customization. If you don't already have Lando, you probably want to uh, visit this um, installation page of the docs and it will tell you according to your operating system uh, how to get and install Lando. And if, if you already have it, you can just continue on. If you don't, you can pause the video and go and get it. Um, and get you rolling. Uh, the Drupal 8 documentation is here at api.drupal.org and this is a great way to figure out uh, what classes are available to you, which methods are on which classes, and uh, up to and including like how do I how do I write a custom Drupal module. If you're a beginner Drupalist you might uh, look into into that uh, and it'll show you uh, what directories you need and what file systems layout and stuff you need. So one thing that we need to uh, use any Lando project is a is a code base. So uh, what I'm going to do today is use Composer to get a Drupal 8 code base, which is a fresh Drupal 8 install. If you have an existing install, you can of course download that and initialize your application that way. The one I'm going to use here is GitHub.com Drupal-Composer slash Drupal-Project. I like to use this one to get started. There are a lot of other possibilities. You can use uh, Pantheon build tools, um, platform.sh has a Drupal 8 example starter kit, although this one works perfectly well with platform.sh. Um, so there's a couple ways you can get started with a Drupal project and a couple different ways even within the composer realm. You can of course just download a Drupal 8 tarball directly from drupal.org. Uh, in this case we're going to use composer to manage the project. All right, let's, uh, let's get started and see. let's dig into this stuff. So the first thing that we're going to do is initialize an application. So the way to do that, so what I have here is just a uh, blank directory on my terminal. So I'm going to uh, initialize the application in this directory. So that's lando init. And lando init is going to ask you a couple questions. And the first thing it's going to do is ask you what recipe you want to use. You can use a custom. You, there's lots of possibilities here that correspond with the documentation backdrop and in this case we're going to use Drupal 8. Where is the web root? So this is relative to where you're issuing this command from. So we're in this blank directory and we're going to put Drupal inside a directory called web. Um, so you uh, name that accordingly. The name of your application, so I'm going to call this Lando uh, and Drupal 8. And that's it. That initializes the application. So what that does is create this configuration file. And the configuration file is uh, just storing uh, the answers to that, to those questions that you just answered. So the name of the application, so this comes the machine name. We said Lando and Drupal 8, and this just uh, you know took away the spaces and put dashes. What uh, starting state do we choose? So the recipe is Drupal 8, and what's the web root? And uh, that's where to serve the application from, which is web. And I'm just going to put in an additional customization here, and I'm going to say via Nginx. By default, if you don't put anything, it will just serve from Apache. You can swap that out to Nginx. Uh, I tend to use Nginx in production, so I'm going to put that here. Um, to just as an example of some additional configuration that you could do. There's lots of stuff in the docs that you can do. 
All right, the next thing we're going to do is start up this app, though that's going to be the lando start command. So lando start, and that will fire up the app. And the reason I'm going to do that, because we don't even have a Drupal 8 code base right now, so what I'm going to do is start the app because Lando's going to pull in some tooling for us. It pulls in a, a couple things that we can use to work with the database and, and do some things like that. But in particular right now, it's going to give us Composer because it knows that Drupal 8 is a PHP application. It's going to pull in Drush and Drupal Console, which are really great things to have as a developer uh, so you can work with Drupal 8 uh, efficiently and have your stuff going and running smoothly. So in particular in this case we're going to use composer tooling command before we even have a Drupal code base because we're going to use it to get Drupal. So there's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing there. If you have composer on your machine you can use composer to initialize the project first and then Lando in it and that's perfectly fine but say you don't have composer on your machine and you want to use Lando to completely manage your dev dependencies uh, this is a way to do that. So you initialize the application, start it up, then you have access to the tooling, and we'll use Composer to pull in the Drupal code base. So one thing about that is when you initialize a Composer application, you do Composer create project, it uh, it's gonna it needs an empty directory to initialize that application. And in this case, we have a lando.yaml file in the directory which we've used to start the Lando application, so it's going to complain about that. So to get around that, what we're going to do is uh, install to a subdirectory, and then we'll move the stuff back out to our project root. And that will get around that. If you have Composer locally, another way possible around that is to Composer create the project from your local global Composer, and then uh, Lando init after that. So if you flip-flop those steps, you can get around that. All right, so we're starting up this application. You see it's uh, pulling in the containers, the database service, Nginx service. Um, and in a second here, a few seconds, we will be uh, ready to go and uh, get our Drupal code base. Uh, Lando does some health checks on the containers. And right now, it's taking a few seconds because since we don't have a Drupal code base, it's trying to uh, ping this. Uh, URL and probably having some trouble since there's not actual code base there. We'll probably see their URLs come up red here. Pulling in Drush here and Drupal Console. So we'll have access to those tools to develop our Drupal 8 application. Very handy. You don't have to worry about which Drush version you're using with Drupal 7 or Backdrop. You just inside each application, uh, each Drupal app has its own Drush. So that's one of the ways that Lando helps you manage your dev dependencies so you, have, you don't have a mismatch. If you want to pin your Drush version to 8.1 in one app and 7.0 in another, you're free to do that with your Lando configuration file. So these are some of the advantages of developing with a tool like Lando. All right, so now we're done. Those containers are spun up. Like I said, the URLs come out red. If we had a Drupal code base and this was a working app, these would come out green, meaning that these URLs are ready to be used. Um, but in this case, we uh, started up the app without our Drupal code base so that we could use Composer in order to get our Drupal code base. So if you just type the command Lando with no arguments, it will tell you some possible things that you can do with Lando. So uh, we have Composer because this is a PHP application so Lando automatically pulls that in. We can export or import our database. We got Drupal console and Drush um, and some other commands here that are, uh, can be useful for developers. In this case the main thing that we're interested in right now is Composer so that we can get a Drupal code base. So what I'm going to do is pull in that Composer project from GitHub that I showed you before. Um, I've got a command prepared here which you can pull right off the um, compose the Drupal Composer project GitHub page. So what I'm going to do is use the Composer inside the container that's provided to me by Lando, and we're going to issue the create project command. Uh, and then we've got some flags here for our Composer uh, command. And I'm going to install it into a directory um, called blah. So right here, you can 
to specify where you want this to install to. So that's going to go out and fetch that GitHub project. So from this readme on this GitHub project, you can see this is where I got the command from. You can grab that. If you want to install Composer locally, it has a link to instructions how to do that. And then this is going to pull in this project for us. And this is a really great setup that a lot of these Composer projects do. They, uh, they when you download your, you manage your site with Composer, this has it configured so that your contrib modules are going to go to uh, the contrib workspace and uh, Drupal core is going to be uh, so all of that instead of going into a vendor where composer by default it's all its code it pulls in we're going to have our code in the places that Drupal expects it very easy setup for us and then if we say you know composer require Drupal path auto you know it'll pull in path auto and put that under uh, modules contrib path auto which is really great um, so we're set up for success here having composer manage our site for us so you can see the only thing in the direct right now is this .lando.yaml file. After we run this uh, composer create project command, we'll uh, refresh that tree and we'll see some, some, some more code in there, some Drupal code, and that's great. Pulling in all our dependencies now, PHP unit, lots of stuff coming in. B hat. Some, so some really great stuff included that the, uh, this uh, project has worked out for us to include some stuff that they know that we're gonna, that we may want to use in our Drupal 8 projects. Great, Composer's finishing up here. Awesome. So that pulls in all our dependencies. So if we refresh the uh, file tree over here, we can see that we've got this new directory which we told it to install to blah. And it's got Drush, Scripts, Vendor, and our web directory. So the problem here is that we installed the blah, and the reason for that was because Composer won't install to a, a directory that's not empty, and we had our .lando. So we're going to correct that. We're going to move all the things from blah back down to this location. And if you refresh the file tree now, you'll see that we have uh, all the things from blah, except for the dot .files, moved down to this location. So let's move the dot files down as well. And let's refresh this directory. Now you see we have the dot files and you see that the blah directory is completely empty, so we don't need that. So that's the step I was talking about since we couldn't since we initialized the Lando app first. If you had a composer global, you could avoid that step by using composer directly from your machine. I kind of like the fact that all my dev dependencies are in Lando and I can use Composer from the containers as well. So I just have everything in Lando. So that's great. Uh, now we've got our file system there. Uh, now we can go back to those URLs um, and I don't remember them off the top of my head. So a handy command is the Lando info command, which will get you, give you lots of information about your app. Uh, what I'm after in particular right now is this URL. So I like to use the HTTPS URL. You can use any one of those URLs. Uh, I always have HTTPS in production. So I tend to use the HTTPS URL locally. So I grab that URL, put it in. Um, what we have here is a self-signed certificate. So you'll have to accept that. I've already accepted it earlier today. So, but if you get, uh, you know, you have to click down on the advanced and proceed to the application. And now we're here at a Drupal 8 installation screen and we're, we're ready to go. We can install Drupal and start being productive and that's what Lando does for you. It allows you to quickly spin up these applications um, and get going and it manages all the dependencies for us and one thing that we do recommend is that you commit that configuration to your repo so we have to make a git repository first. So now everyone on the team has the, the this uh, .lando.yaml file, and when each developer does lando start, 
they're going to spin up the same containers. They're all going to be working with Nginx. There's no differences in the local development environments. One developer is not going to be using MySQL 5.5 and one MySQL 5.7. Everybody's going to have the same things and you can customize accordingly in this .lando.yaml file. That's getting started with Drupal 8. I hope that helps. Uh, have a good time with that. Let me know if you have any questions.